All right, welcome back to Plug and Socks, the podcast, episode 154. Today on the show, we have a migrant update that could lead to chaos in a city near you. Then, in Cringe of the Week, these eighth graders are being labeled hate criminals because their private group chat got leaked. Then we have some dating advice for this bearded lady. And last but not least, this guy can't understand why white folks are scared of black people. We'll go over some crime stats to help him understand. All this and more, it's Fuck Us Talks, the podcast, episode 154, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. cool. It's Fuck Us Talks, the podcast, featuring Richard Richard. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, as show watchers, you know something's going on. There's something big brewing, something to be a little suspicious about. You can't quite pinpoint it, but you know there's something coming. That's why you need to listen to your gut and prepare with My Patriot Supply. Since 2008, My Patriot Supply has helped millions of American families prepare for an uncertain future. Many of these families choose the three month emergency food kit. With 22 food and drink varieties, there'll never be any food boredom. With over 2,000 calories a day, there will be no starvation. And sealed inside ultra durable four layer packaging, these ready hour meals last up to 25 years in storage. Go to my website and stock up on these emergency food kits. Get as many as your family needs. There's going to be a $200 off coupon for show watchers, so make sure you go there today. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. All orders ship fast and free. It's better to have emergency food kits and never need them than to need them and not have them. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to My Patriot Supply for sponsoring. Thank you, My Patriot Supply. Longtime sponsor of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Great sponsor of the show and great product. Yeah. It's actually a great time to have some emergency food because you're probably going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep saying that every episode. The longtime <laughs> sponsor. I haven't needed it yet. Yeah, but you know the way things are trending, the odds you're going to need it, they yeah. keep ticking up. Yeah. All right, we have a very good show for you guys today. We have a strong housekeeping, only three pages. Okay. Went light on housekeeping, crazy cringe, good urban, and some uplifting. Didn't fully phone in on uplifting this time. And if you want the Rob Smith stuff, you're going to have to wait for bonus land. Yeah, we're going to cover all the Rob uh, Smith stuff in bonus land. There's a lot of Rob shit to get to. His great comeback after three weeks of, uh, what, three months? Yeah, or three three months. I know, crazy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> three months of dormant Rob, and he came back swinging. Yep. So uh, <laughs> we'll get to all that in bonus land. But first things first, St. Patrick's Day a couple weeks ago. A uh, couple weeks, a couple days ago. Yep, yep. You're getting your Rob timeline and your St. Patrick's Day timeline yeah. next. I'm, I'm merging timelines. But yeah, St. Patrick's Day a couple days ago. And the city of Boston, happy St. Patrick's Day. And they showed the uh, nice Irish lad there. Yeah. <laughs> There's Levante, the good old Irish lad. <laughs> They can't even help themselves, really. And that's the thing when a social media intern goes, here you go, I got this one. Is this good? And then some lady goes, yeah, that's great. There's no, you're erasing actual, you could throw a snowball in Boston and find 10 white Irish guys who are actually the stereotypical St. Patty's Day. You could go to Southie and find some drunk Irish guy. I'm pretty, I mean, that's the whole town. They all have the hat. (laughs) They all have the little hat, the driver's hat. So you could have go out. They went out of their way to find a non-white guy on St. Patrick's Day, but they went the Netflix route instead, where they just kind of take history or whatever's going on and then just gear it towards racial inclusivity. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing matters. Who's at the parade? Don't think about it too much. You know that we found the one black guy, and that's who we're leading with. Exactly. And whenever they have like the ability to choose who represents the city or whatever in a picture like this. Yeah. Like if it's a positive thing, they can't pick white. Yeah. So it has to be a person of color or like a native American or something. But if it's negative, if they're looking for the thumbnail for who's doing all the looting, the the stealing, the robberies, then it has to be a white person. Yeah. You can see the white behind the ski mask, the white eyes. Yeah, exactly. So there's obviously an agenda there. Get rid of white, white erasure when you can, and then include everyone else besides white people when you can as well. And you know the phrase tie goes to the runner? This Uh wasn't even a tie. 
Yeah. It wasn't even close to being a tie. Yeah. And it went to the black guy. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's par for the course, right? It's Netflix. It's everywhere. It's every city. Yeah, exactly. And it just gives you a little insight to who the protected classes are and who's on the chopping block. Yeah. <laughs> who's on one of those stages of genocide. Yeah, exactly. All right. Erasure. Move, that move, would be erasure. Erasure. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. Uh, Obama went to the UK. He had a little meeting on uh, Downing Street. There he is walking in. Oh, hey, I'm Barack. What are you here to talk about? Globalism. Yeah, my wife, who's a man, is running for president. Not everyone knows yet, but I'm just planting the seeds here in Britain. Yeah, so he's up to something. Uh, I don't know what, you know, there's a lot of these globalist types that are always kind of taking meetings still. Remember John Kerry was meeting with, like, Iran and France? After he was done with being Secretary of the State, it's like, oh, got to go check in on Iran, make sure they're getting nukes. It's like, oh, these are just my friends from when I was in the government. Mm, mm. I don't seems think like so, John. To, seems like you're up to something, John. I don't think so, John. Yeah, and Obama's doing the same thing. And then you wonder, you see all this stuff, and you're like, why, why is every single Western country that's not used to be 90% white experiencing all these third world migrant waves? And then- why are they all doing like totalitarian COVID state and all that stuff? And it's and then you got the Obama taking the laps around the globe. And yeah, it doesn't do good to dismiss the there's a secret cabal of people running the world theory. Yeah, <laughs> when all the same problems befall every single country, right? And then you see Obama walking around taking secret meetings. Great. There's no cabal. We do have to meet with Obama privately, though. <laughs> Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, we're still in housekeeping. We're going to kind of have a nice pace to it. We can't get it bogged down, you know? Okay. Otherwise, Quick. we'll have to cut things later. Charlie Kirk had an interesting tweet. It's something called the Cloward Piven Theory, and he said this is what Joe Biden's doing, but can you give it the tweet a read and yeah. then eventually the... Yeah, Joe Biden is implementing the Cloward Piven strategy, first developed in 1966, that seeks to hasten the fall of capitalism by overloading the government bureaucracy, crushing national debt, Swarming the country with mass migration. This is their blueprint. And then the Cloward Piven strategy is a political strategy outlined in 1966. It's the strategy of forcing political change leading to societal collapse through orchestrated crises. The orchestrated crises is the important part there. Ding, 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 rings true. <laughs> we've we've seen a few of those. Yeah. The orchestrated crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the MO. That's what they do in New York City, too. Uh, obviously, in the New York City subways now, we have all these armed guards and the National Guard and guns and cops everywhere. Checking and, Nancy's bag to make yeah. sure she doesn't have anything. We get the highly surveilled police state, uh, but it's really because they purposely collapse the system by loading it up with illegals. Loading it up with illegals and then not keeping any criminals in jail. And then all of a sudden, well, we need the National Guard. We need our liberties to be infringed upon because we're not doing the basic things that a citizen's social contract with the government is expected to uphold, exactly. right? We had the laws to maintain order. We just don't use them. And then we create this crisis. Mm -hmm. And then to fix it, we need to revamp the whole system because look how crazy things got. And then it actually is going to lead to people forfeiting their rights when we had the laws in the books all along. We just never enforced it. And this whole idea of like wrecking the system to revamp it, mm -hmm. we see that with uh, the socialists and like the – the educated liberal Muppets mm -hmm. who are always saying like, oh, capitalism's failed. Look what's going on in the world. It's so bad because of capitalism's failures. And it's like, no, you kind of just brought a ton of illegal immigrants here and you're giving out social benefits and you're not uh, locking up any criminals. You printed as much cash as you possibly can. We're off the gold standard. Yeah. So it's like, I think that's kind of what wrecked it, yeah. not just capitalism in yeah. general. The vague capitalism. Th ah, capitalism did this. It's like, you guys have been running this for a long time and running it straight into the ground, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. They, that's the whole point is they want the kind of midwit, not paying attention person to be begging for extra security, heighten this. Uh, start tracking people, facial recognition. And it's like, all we need to do is enforce the laws that are on the books and not import a billion people. Yeah, exactly. Pretty simple recipe for success. And America was pretty quite successful for years and years and years, right? Decades. Mm -hmm. But you get people convinced that their past and being American, something to be uh, not grateful for or uh, happy with, it's actually something to be uh, depressed over and embarrassed about. And then you get people vouching and pushing to destroy the things that made the country great. Yeah. R.I.P. All of a sudden, groceries cost twice what they used to, and universal basic income doesn't sound too bad, but it's mm -hmm. all by design. Yeah, we're going to get to that. 
All right, next clip. Uh, Trump JFK docs. So yeah. Judge Napolitano was talking to Trump, and he said, hey, you kind of let me down. What happened to fully releasing the JFK docs? And look what Trump told him. I said, how you doing? He said, ah, not too well. And he went off into a tangent about what he thought happened with the election. I said, you know, you made a promise to the public many times and to me privately that you haven't kept. Why? Why? I'll take care of it right now. I said, you promised you would release the records of the JFK assassination. He oh. said to me, Judge, if they showed you what they showed me, you wouldn't have released it either. And I said, who's they and what did they show you? And then he said, Judge, someday when we're on the phone, and then he raised his voice, and there aren't 15 people listening to the phone call, back to a normal voice, I'll tell you. Oh, my God. So makes you wonder what Trump saw, what documents were revealed to him that showed him what really happened with JFK. It makes you wonder if the Jackie O with the sleeve gun at point blank range. Sleeve gun at point blank range. I haven't even heard this. I didn't even know this was a schizo thing. Oh, uh, yeah. If you look closely. That... Jackie O did a little. <laughs> Are you okay? Boom. <laughs> So anything's possible. Uh, oh my god! I didn't even. I thought you were gonna make a point. I thought you were gonna like say something like, "Who's hey, they?" And there's a Jackie O sleeve gun point blank <laughs> range theory okay. that actually kind of makes sense. Okay. Uh, but if you think about the JFK assassination, what came after it? Like if you look at it in coups, mm -hmm. like JFK getting assassinated, and then what came after it was basically the Uniparty. Mm -hmm. It was like the CIA was created, uh, and then you kind of had like the establishment in place uh, yeah. that took the place of like a duly elected person. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of the guy that was opposing them, and the Uniparty rose up after. And then another coup that happened was 9-11. Yeah. So 9-11 happens, and then it kind of defangs our constitution. And then the third coup, uh, coup, Trump 2020 election. Yeah. So you kind of look at like the the coups over the years. I think a lot of it did start with JFK. Um, and then, you know, we don't know what your theory is and who did what. I think when in doubt, you can kind of just say CIA and Mossad. Yeah, well. That I, does, that's most of them. Yeah, for sure. I get that. That's where I thought you were going, not the Jackie, Jackie O sleeve gun. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Jackie O sleeve gun. But so. Uh, um, <laughs> But yeah, no, you one could argue a schizophrenic minded conspiracy theorist guy could argue that, you know, the JFK assassination and uh, all of modern history from then is when the deep state was truly formed and born. Yeah. Right. And I think the the, the lifelong is, bureaucrats pulling yeah. the strings and ignoring actual uh, elected officials, right? The Bush family. That's all we're saying. Rise Pe to power. People like to discredit the deep state. And it's just like, well, uh, OK, let me pick a random guy. Who's running this Homeland Security job who's been there for 20 years, who answers to really nobody, who kind of tells the president what to... You know what I mean? It's not that nefarious. Yeah. It's just installed people. So, oh, we do this audit uh, on the Pentagon, and every year there's just trillions of dollars of unaccounted for of unaccounted for funds. Yeah. And then that, but that's it. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Guys, that, don't worry about that, right? But it kind of tells you, like, Trump was shown... Here's what really happened to JFK. And it spooked him. And it spooked him. Because imagine the deep state shows you and goes, oh, yeah, here's what happened to JFK. The deep state killed him. You want to release this? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of go, nah, nah, actually, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. So that's my theory there. Uh, and then, yeah, Jackie O with the sleeve gun. We'll look into that. All right. Uh, we'll <laughs> I need to watch the Zabruder tape again. The Zabruder film. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, remember last week on the show, we talked about how the spring breakers are just like adults taking a break from their jobs? Yeah, it's not spring students. break, right? Yeah, well, we found some pictures from spring break that kind of prove that. Here's this guy getting arrested in Miami. This guy's like 30-something. 30 30, full beard, full dreads. Here are these women. Yeah. 30-something with their asses out. Disgusting. Here's this, you know, oh, oh, dancing. look at the boom box attached to his hip. That guy's a fucking menace. That guy's loud. Yeah. And then here's a big fake tits white girl. We got to balance it out. Yeah. One yep, white girl all juiced up. But yeah, wild photos. This is what the New York Post headline. Wild photos show spring break mayhem in Miami Beach as cops arrest more than 250 partiers. Yeah. And spring breakers is kind of like a slur, I guess, because mm. this is really just black adults in Miami during March. Not working at T-Mobile. Yeah. They're, the week. they're on a break from the government job, the, the post office, right? <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, the spring breakers are added again, and that's another euphemism. I that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I guess yeah. Slur spring euphemism on the loose. Spring breakers instead of cr- black criminals. But yeah, these are just adults who got a spirit flight to Miami, and they're menaces. So I, I think the the crackdown is is uh, well positioned there for yeah. Miami. You know, they yeah. they weren't talking about it's not the frat boys from Alabama who can't handle their alcohol. You know, mm-hmm. it's like criminals who kind of Ubered on down or whatever. Yeah. And the, the whole point of this is to kind of keep an eye on the spring break mayhem because the media is going to cover for them, even though they're reporting on the stories, mm-hmm. but by calling them spring breakers, you're kind of like, Oh, it's just college kids, kids letting loose, man. They're going crazy. And it's like, no, these are adults who are not following the rules and going crazy, which is going to result in overreach. We have a curfew. Now you can't be on the beach at certain hours. Yeah, parking's a hundred bucks. Like all these things that you know, you had the rules to combat against, the but deterrence. you didn't do it, and now everyone kind of loses their freedom. Yeah. that's like the overarching theme. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of times we lose our freedom. It's because the stuff's not enforced, not because we have an inefficient system or not the law, not enough laws on the books. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our migrants section. Migrants. Yeah, goddamn migrants. These migrants. Um, well, first let's show AOC's district. AOC's district looks like a third world country. Here it is. Just selling clothes, probably bed bugs and all those clothes. Yeah, in the t- bed bugs and in the time of organized mass retail theft, I wonder. I wonder where a lot of this came from, right? Yeah. So this is New York City on the streets, just a open air third world market basically now. They don't even have tables. Yeah. That's third world shit. In America, we have tables yeah, on our yeah. flea markets, That's you a know. Good point. And then there's a criminal who was a an illegal immigrant who was a teacher, mm-hmm. and he was uh, sexually abusing children multiple times. He's been deported, and he came back, and we got caught again. Meet Irvin Giovanni Alfaro Lopez, a twice-deported illegal working as a teacher in Maryland, and it's though I'm just going to stop right there. Sentences that shouldn't exist for mm-hmm. 500, Alex? Mm-hmm. The twice-deported teacher? Teacher. In Maryland. All right. Uh, he was just arrested and charged with sexually abusing multiple minors. One of the victims was just six years old. Um, and these crimes were actually committed between 2016 and 2018 while he was a teacher at church in Deerwood. So I don't know what's happening. This isn't like exactly a Biden's fault, but I don't know what policies anybody wrote that said an illegal immigrant who's been deported multiple times can come teach at school. Yeah. Put him around, let's put this illegal around kids. Young kids. Six years old. Yeah. Yeah, but don't worry about it. The Biden administration is focusing on some of our big problems. Uh, I saw this headline, why McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken as Biden administration launches crackdown and major win for consumers. Yeah, the government is pushing for easier repair options for soft serve ice cream machines in McDonald's. So it's like a one, the federal government is involving itself in the meme that McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken. Yeah. Yeah. And there's 50 million illegals here. Isabel, what's her name? Uh, Isabella DeLuca. Isabella DeLuca just got uh, arrested for, for January 6th. But the ice cream at McDonald's, the guys. The ice cream at McDonald's. That's, that's what the uh, federal government's uh, focusing on, I yeah. guess. Yeah. The ice cream at McDonald's and arresting uh, 20-something-year-old girls for going on the stairs of the Capitol. Yeah, 90 million illegals are here. I, I like, it's like the old joke. You just, the number keeps changing. Uh, 80 million, 100 million illegals. And it's yeah. it's soon going to be that. And we should just say a hundred million, and they let them correct it and go. It's not a hundred; it's only fifty-six. It's million. forty-seven million. <laughs> it's like, Duh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oops. Uh, so that's what everyone's focusing on. And here's where it gets dark. Here's the part that I've kind of been harping on with the whole migrant crisis. Uh, my whole thing is these people have no means of making money for the most part. They get given you know resources from the state, whether that's housing or food or stipends or whatever. And eventually that runs out, and then these people are desperate and released on the streets. And I just found this clip in New York from a street reporter, and it's basically saying in 30 days that's going to happen. This is Tompkins Park. This is the most popular migrant shelter where all of these men come once they come into New York City. There are hundreds upon thousands of men. We have met men that have wristbands, and their number is in the 19,000 before they can go in and sleep in that shelter. Mayor Adams put out a paper and he put out an announcement saying that after these men have been in the shelter, 30 days is their limit. After 30 days, they will no longer be able to be housed. They will be put out on the streets, homeless. What we learned today by reading, we 
physically held the paper that says what is going to be happening to these migrant men, on that paper it said that migrant families will not be treated the same way as these migrant men. Migrant families will be able to reapply. After 30 days, they'll be able to reapply for a different shelter. So all these men... All right, so the family's taken care of, but these single migrant men, mm -hmm. they have 30 days, and then they'll be released on the street. And what do you think is going to happen when you're from a third world country, you have no money and no resources, no ways of making money, and then you already spent all the money you ever saved to come to America? I, I, you don't go home. If you don't go home. You don't it, go home and go, hey, it didn't work. My first instinct would be to click up. Yeah. Get together with a few of your boys from the same country that I came from. Maybe my Venezuelan boys. Yeah. Start a little group. See who's got a signal jammer. Yeah. See if anybody's <laughs> got a mask that you can use, right? So they're definitely willing to do crimes, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, they're very desperate people. And then when you're on the streets and there's so much wealth around you. Oh. Like there's no wealth you know, on the streets. No one's got money. Everyone's a poor migrant. But when you look up, you start looking at the brownstones. You go, oh, my God, look at that. Yeah. You think one family lives there? That's a lot of space. Gee, they got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh. You start getting on Zillow. They have access to Zillow. The illegals <laughs> can look on Zillow. So that's what's coming. Unfortunately, uh, once these single men are left on their own, they're going to click up and the home invasions are going to continue. And that's what we've seen here in L.A. Check this clip out from a sergeant or one of the police people. <laughs> Sergeant or one of the police people. All right, all right. Is. Close enough. I'm it trying is. to be respectful of our of our uh, of our veterans. <laughs> of our yeah, veterans. There's a significant increase in burglaries from um, organized Chief. groups that That's are outside Chief. this country that are coming into the country, um, and they are targeting uh, high end residents. Um, and we are addressing that specifically in a task force fashion through multi-agencies. Lots of these break-ins have been recorded by security cameras in recent years. Detectives tell me many tourist burglars who've been arrested often entered the U.S. through a visa waiver program. Many were visiting from Chile and other South American countries. The LAPD says there have been more than 900 residential burglaries across the city since January. Some 900 since January. Yeah. It's a lot. That's, That's accelerating. Lot. That's it's exponential. Lot. And it's getting worse. Yeah. And so, I mean, here's the headline. The LAPD forms a special task force to combat organized foreign gangs burglarizing homes. And the organized gangs are coming mostly from Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, Chile. And I mean, we've shown that. We've shown you the Detroit Metro homes where they use the signal jammer to come on in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a problem everywhere across the country. And when you can't work... When the federal government gives you this weird dichot or this weird incentive structure where you can come in and mill about and loiter, but you can't work, what are you going to do? Mm. What are the extracurriculars going to be? And then it's stuff that you're used to that are that are not like looked down upon in whatever third world country you came from, mm -hmm. like robberies and home invasions. That's probably pretty standard operating procedure in Chile and Venezuela. Yeah, actually, probably not even. They they probably work normal jobs. I'm the bus driver in Chile, but here I'm the home invasion MVP. You know? <laughs> That's true. And I mean, it's something Fleckus has long said. He's the number one pick on my home invasion fantasy team. Um, it, it's a bit, but it's not based on nothing. These mm -hmm. people are... They, and there's two levels to this. The home invasion, the bad boys, home invasion, and then there's just the drunk driving Modelo guys. Mm -hmm. And that you know how uh, leftists always say, like, well, who's going to pick your strawberries? Yeah, yeah. We need our own, like, cliches for, yeah. for the illegal migrants, and it's home invasion and drinking Modellos and getting right behind the wheel of a 1999 F-150. That's so true. And yeah. going the wrong way on a highway. Who's going to pick our strawberries? Who's going to home invade us? Who's going to T-bone your dad while drunk driving? <laughs> who's going to put your dad in a wheelchair? Yeah, we need, and then get nothing for it yeah. and not even get deported. Yeah. We need these people here for that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's the end of our migrant section. Let's not get too down or too depressed. Just buy guns. It's just really 100% gun time. Buy we can't rely on the police. We can't assume they're going to come. We can't assume they're going to stop anyone. All You, you need to be self-sufficient. Buy a gun chamber around and stay ready you gotta have the round chambered you sleep with it you sleep with it you <laughs> hand while you sleep that's what i do all uh, right moving on speaking of blueberries 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's Jackie. get a little lighthearted thing. Uh, world's largest blueberry. Look at the size of that thing. 70 times larger than normal NAB's world record for heaviest berry. You eat in, that like an apple. In Australia. Yeah, you slice it up. That's pretty good. We need some illegals here to pick these. I guess. I yeah, guess. Yeah, you do, but you don't need 60 million. You need like a couple thousand. You need a couple thousand. On they're a, here already. On a bus, and then you send them back after the season. Yeah. We you don't let them set them. up shop, right? Exactly. Um, and then there is a new way of eating fruit. So a lot of you guys might think that when fruit gets moldy, you have to throw it away. But I found this video on TikTok that tells us otherwise. This is just another video of me eating mold again. Molded berries. We've been told that we have to blame nature for everything. Mold is not the cause of diseases. I know a lot of people are saying that they are, but that doesn't mean that it's true. We have to stop blaming nature. And by that I mean we have to stop blaming what already exists in nature. That's enough. The guy's eating mold. Guy likes mold. He fucking loves it. Yeah. So if you guys want to send us videos uh, shouting out the podcast while eating mold. What are you talking I'll about? I'll send you a free t-shirt. Get out of here, man. But you can't uh, encourage anything crazy. You're going to get someone killed out here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never mind. Actually, don't. All right. <laughs> Use this opportunity. Such to help a waste of a fucking <laughs> segment. Now we're going to have to cut a video from Urban Decay. No, no. All right. It's all paced perfectly. Okay. Make sure you guys use this opportunity to help us tickle the post, help us juice the algo, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a comment again, then start yapping about what you want to yap about. And if you don't comment, we're going to give your home address to a Venezuelan squad. Yeah. And what they do with it is up to them. They're going to tie you up and make you eat multi blueberries. <laughs> Shout yeah. out the podcast. Yeah. But you'll get a t-shirt. Yeah, they'll have Modellos. And then make sure you send stuff to the P.O. Box as well. All right, right, moving on. Speaking of jobs, uh, Chick-fil-A is trying a new self-checkout with no workers. No menu boards, no cash register, no dining room. We got an exclusive first look ahead of its March 21st opening. So here's how it works when the restaurant opens next week. You place your order on the mobile app ahead of time, and then you come into the restaurant, the space just 400 square feet, and you'll come over to this board. You're watching for your name to move from preparing up to ready. When you see your name in ready, you'll come to the front desk and tell the worker your name. Order for Emily. That's it. So we get it. Yeah. Gen Z, uh, this is, I think, a way to get rid of uh, Gen Z workers. Okay. Because Gen Z can't actually do anything. I've been talking to people in Gen Z, and I ask them all the time, like, what's Gen Z up to? Unfortunately, their brains are fully cooked. Yeah. You can't do anything. The meetings, if you're like a Gen Z white collar guy, the meetings need to be in TikTok form. You need to be able to swipe up on it, I guess. You literally can't ask Gen Z anything without them getting like anxiety. Yeah. And it could be something simple like, oh, like, do you like Nike or Reebok? Uh, well, uh, why do I have to choose? Well, uh, they're both really good, but then oh, and then you can like oh, I got Nike, and then the whole day they'll be going, I should have picked Reebok. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they're completely head cases that can't handle anything. They can't handle any adversity, and I think that's why universal basic income is basically coming, whether we want it to or not. Like obviously, it's not American, it's not capitalism, but the deep state, the bad guys, are backdooring us on UBI. By making Gen Z so retarded that when they get older, everyone's going to go, well, the other options, they just work and they can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> like It's like so clear that Gen Z being uh, good workers in the workforce and participating in a, an economy is like not really an option. So let's just give AI their jobs and then we'll pay them 1500 bucks a month and they can live in their pods. Interesting. I think that's what's coming. And I think these types of stores like proves it because having Gen Z working there is not going to work. I have a slightly different take that's also a plausible, they, they could merge together, right? I went to Chipotle this weekend, mm -hmm. and I get to Chipotle, and I get in line, and I'm stand, I'm the only one in line, and everyone's like beleaguered and stressed out and hustling around, getting the chicken, getting the this. I'm watching like 10 people work, and then you see the little to-go aisle. They have like a second uh, workstation to put together burritos that are just for mobile orders and pickups and stuff. And it took him like five minutes to come and ask me what kind of burrito I wanted. And I'm like, I'm the only guy here. I'm the only one who matters. Right. Mm. But everything is being geared towards like, come in, get your slop, get the hell out. We don't want to rent this much square footage. And we're just fe uh, like churning on the apps. Right. Yeah. The food delivery shit. And so like, 
I remember back in 2009, 2008, those kind of early days, I used to go to Chipotle, biggest scoops you've ever seen. I'm the only thing that matters. Now it's like they're trying to do 400 different things and uh, it's all for telephone people who are going to get slop dropped yeah. off through their trap door by a minority. That's true. Yeah. So, the days of prioritizing the in-person customer interaction, it's long over. gone. Yeah. It's, it's long gone. So that pa- paired with Gen Z being uh, virtually brain dead, I don't know. I think we're trending towards this, right? Yeah. Because the future isn't telling someone face-to-face your order. Yeah. Because they might go, uh, uh, I don't like when people <laughs> come in. I don't like when people come in. I don't like talking to someone. You can't do eye contact. Um, speaking of brains being fully cooked... Here's a, uh, what's it called? Like a visual riddle Mm. or a brain teaser. Okay. What's it called? What's the optical illusion? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Here's an optical illusion. Let us know what you guys see. If you see a tree, then you're left-brained. If you see two people holding hands, then you're right-brained. And if you see an absolutely zooted ostrich. That's what I see. You're a show watcher. I see a fucking high-as-a-kite ostrich. (laughs) cartoonized yeah so you're definitely a show watcher then all right that's what i see too all right moving on uh really quick last thing on this page of housekeeping the eclipse coming in conjunction with the bugs getting let out cicadas yeah cicadas uh you know obviously in the future eating the bugs Mm -hmm. is like the globalist goal Mm -hmm. i think when the bugs come out you're gonna see a lot of people eating the bugs and they're going to fry them up. They're going to put some sauce on them or some seasoning. I bet they taste even pretty good. Okay. But it's going to be a big opportunity with all the bugs everywhere engulfing the entire continent. It's going to be a good opportunity for the for the bad guys to say, oh, look, these people are eating them and it's good. And they're going to think it's a good thing to eat the bugs to help get rid of them. Uh, and it's going to be like a ball rolling in the direction of people getting used to eating bugs. All right. That's fair. Um, you know what I was going to say, like the 17, every 17 years, the cicadas come out and then another 13 years, there's a different brood and now they're overlapping. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to be a banner year for mid-sized, like marsupial types, you know, like little bugs, oh, or little, little mammals. Bug eaters. Yeah. They're going to be fat and happy. That's going to be a great year for them. There's so. going to be a lot of rats, a lot yeah. of mice. Yeah. That's Good exciting. For Good for them. Even cats like to get those bugs. Mm-hmm. I had a dog who used to love those. Wow. So if you're uh, into stocks or whatever, I would <laughs> I would go long on marsupials. <laughs> I'm I don't opening. know why I said marsupials. We have no marsupials in Isn't America. like a little kangaroo? <laughs> yeah, but like, you, you know what I mean? Like mid-sized. Little those, mammals that eat little with their mammals. hands. Yeah. I'm, I'm going long on raccoons. Raccoons, yeah. All right. Last page of housekeeping. Speaking of eating the bugs, apparently humans, us Americans, are eating a credit card worth of plastic every week. Yeah, we consume up to a credit card's worth of plastic every week, uh, and it's fucking everyone up. New studies are linking them to infertility, cognitive dysfunction, Alzheimer's, heart disease, and so much more. Take the plastic out of your life. Yeah. So, obviously, that's not ideal. I don't think we have a choice. I I don't think anybody's choosing to eat, oh, I'll I'll eat my credit card this week now, and they (laughs) bite it. I just eat my credit card at the beginning of the week and get get it it over over. (laughs) I'm done. It's the same with spiders. You eat eight spiders in a year, I just eat them all January 1st. I know. And then all of a sudden, they'll leave you alone. (laughs) No, this guy's good. He already ate eight. Uh, (laughs) But obviously, here on the show, we're more aware of what's going on health-wise and how much we're being poisoned and everything you eat is poison. And even when you think you're being healthy and eating a salad, it's still full of poison. Uh, So there's no plastic in grass-fed steak from a local farm. Okay. There's no plastic in cow guts either. Okay. So it's something to kind of keep in mind. Maybe it could be a good time for show watchers just to start eating steak only until we figure out why there's so much poison in all the food. Just a moratorium on anything (laughs) that's other than a cow. Yeah. We don't really know what's going on. Maybe we just eat steak only for a little bit. Um, And also, obviously, with this, people eat so much poison and plastics and seed oils and preservative and all this toxic crap, and it makes your stomach microbiome really messed up. And then that messed up stomach microbiome puts your body in fight or flight mode. And then everyone's body is in flight and they live like this life where they're not really present. And all they want to do is like go back home and they're antisocial. I used to have this too, way worse. Uh, So if you get your stomach health fixed and you look out for your stomach health, your whole life will kind of return to you. You'll be more present. You'll be more confident. So I think this year on the show, show watchers, I'm just going to plant the seed now. 
let's really focus on improving and fixing our gut health. It's your second brain. A lot of your feel-good hormones and the serotonin and stuff like that uh, is triggered from your stomach and how your stomach's doing. And most people's stomach microbiomes are pretty botched. So eat steak only until we figure out what's going on. And then that will naturally start to fix it. And then you'll come back into your life and be like, damn, I'm actually way more present and enjoying my life than I used to. I'm actually enjoying interacting with people and talking to the neighbor and going to the store. And then you'll never go back to the poisons because you'll realize what feeling good is. Because a lot of times we eat so much crap that every day we feel like crap from the food, but then you don't even realize and you just assume feeling like crap is normal. And then when you have a day where you feel good from eating good food, you get your life back because then you go, oh, this feels way better than those crap days. I don't want to have a crap day again. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. This is more your thing, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, thought I'd get that out there. Eating cows. Fleckus has a longstanding belief, too. Like a chicken, he pecks around in the dirt, and he's like a little, he's little. He pecks around, he eats the bugs, he eats stuff. And if you get too close, he goes like this. He goes, Yeah, he <laughs> he's skittish. Off. He's they're, scared. They're skittish. So a cow, I think a cow is the ultimate move. A cow's like this. Yeah. He's sturdy. And he eats grass. Like this. Yeah. And a cow's like this. So which one do you want to be? Do you want to be, do you want to be a chicken? <laughs> it's quite simple. Or do you want to be a cow? Yeah, you want to be right. a bull. Exactly. All right. Well, I, yeah, we got to that. That's the end of housekeeping. Just make sure you guys eat your grass-fed steak and butter until we figure out what's going on with, the, with all the poison. Smart. All right, moving on to Cringe of the Week. Before we get there, we have a very special message from Fleckus Merch. Guys, if you're a show watcher and you love the show and you recommend it to your friends and you don't miss an episode, why not rep the show via a very cool t-shirt available on FleckusMerch.com. We have the podcast shirt. We have the podcast hoodie and a crowd favorite, the Clintons shirt. That is linked in the description. FleckusMerch.com is the website. Go there today, support the show, and get some very, very, very cool merch that will make the liberals in your life mad and the conservatives laugh. All right, cringe of the week. Our first clip is this bearded lady is looking for dating advice. Today, I'm going on my first blind date. Dating can be really difficult when you're non-binary and a bearded woman at the same time. The response I got from dating apps was not good. I got told I was disgusting a lot, so I'm feeling a mixture of nervous and excited. But I feel confident. Yeah, well, dating is tough. Yeah. The apps might not work, I'm assuming. Uh, but blind date? That's not what you want to do either. Blind date, bearded woman, kind of a oxymoron? I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, and to be honest, whoever set you up on that blind date, it's called putting you into the buzzsaw. Well, putting the other person into the buzzsaw. And this person, too. It's true. It's like there's two bodies in the wreckage. Both had to waste an entire night, right? Yeah, and whoever set you up on the blind date considers you to be their pet person mm. with entertaining talents. Yeah. Uh, so they're getting big squirts when you go on the blind date, and they know that they set their friend up with a bearded woman. Yeah. So they're like their squirts are off the charts, unfortunately. And this is just a man, right? Yes. But they're going by the title Bearded Lady. Which is literally an 1800 circus freak. Yeah. So you're trying to set an 1800 circus freak up on a blind date. And so that blind date matchmaker has to go, like, all right, who else can I do? Uh, 1800 circus freak. We got an eight foot tall guy. We, uh, we got the world's fattest man. <laughs> He's and, single. And then back then, that was just like a guy who was 350. It wasn't <laughs> even that crazy. Yeah. So we've actually expanded. So you're left with like whoever's in the circus to mm. put. To match make with this. And yeah, blind date, I don't think it's the right move. I think you need to find someone who's equally trans or some th some sort of fucked up on that's the other end. That's what I was going to say. And then that's who the matchmaker needs to be. Yeah. Like, I am a big believer in there's someone for everyone. Yeah. So this person kind of should just date a trans person. Yeah. Or someone who's like asexual, who can't, but who needs company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if they're just buddies and they play video games together. That's a good point. But yeah. if you're this person and you don't, obviously... Number one route would be laser hair removal. Yeah, don't have the beard. But if you want the beard and it's part of your identity, believe it or not, I would lean into that and lead with the photos of you in the bearded lady outfit. Uh, so when you get matched with someone and they see the bearded woman that you are, 
you know they're not going to be surprised and go, what am I doing here on this date? This is a complete setup. Am I on a game show? Is this yeah. a bit? Yeah. Am I on John Quinones is what would you do? Yeah. <laughs> Where are they coming in with a, okay, and it was a bearded lady and you didn't immediately berate yeah, her. Yeah, we had a nice time. <laughs> Split the bill. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, le- if you're this person, lead with your uh, characteristics, your facial hair. You're and- giving advice to the bearded woman in our audience. <laughs> and then what, if you get a date that someone, someone matches you based on your appearance that you're leading with, then you know you got someone who's at least open to it. Okay. Can't Fair. do blind dates because yeah. those are going to go over a million, and then you're going to go, "Dang, what's wrong with me? I, I, this is never going to work." It was never going to work to start off with. You never gave yourself a chance. Yeah. So you got to lean into what you look like if that's what you want to continue to look like. Mm-hmm. And it still might not work out. I think it probably won't. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm uh, not a believer in there's someone for everyone. I'm in. A, I'm a believer of uh, you get stuck in the rut that you made for yourself sometimes. That's a good point. And bearded woman is in a rut. So if bearded woman started eating steak only, he'd she just might... be a guy. He'd she... <laughs> come no, back. Wait, a sec. wait, I'm Michael. I just bench two twenty five. What the fuck? I'm Michael this yeah. whole time. And then you just you're just a fat guy. Yeah, and he's walking with a cane too. Like you're a dis- semi disabled bearded lady getting smoked on dating apps, and yeah. now you're gonna go to the blind date buzzsaw. I don't know. I don't think there's a winner here. Yeah, it's tough to find one. Speaking of people leaning into uh, what they are, plus size park hoppers. This is one of your favorites. Yeah, and they blocked you, so you couldn't even see this. But yeah. park si- uh, plus size park hoppers. They talk about uh, Disneyland and how, what it's like to experience Disneyland while being uh, morbidly obese. They range in sizes from 2X to 5X. Should I just let it play? Yeah. Have you been thinking about renting a scooter for your Disney World vacation, but you weren't sure where to begin? Hey everyone, we're Plus Size Park Hoppers, and we range in sizes from 2X to 5X. Disney World vacations can require a lot of walking, which can be painful and might put a damper on your vacation. For longer trips, one of us always rents a scooter, and she prefers to rent through Gold Mobility. Renting a scooter through Gold Mobility is much more cost-effective than renting through Disney, and you don't even have to rope drop the ECV counter. Their most durable model is the Maxima, which has a 500 pound weight capacity much like hercules this thing really goes the distance between the captain wow that's not bad 300 bucks to rent a mobility scooter for the week so you can enjoy disney without having to walk around and get really sweaty yeah exactly and everyone knows when you go to disney world you get like fifteen thousand steps yeah it's too much Mm -hmm. you don't want to do that yeah get the mobility scooter also they say 2x to 5x just say the weights. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know the weights. <laughs> I want to know what's on the scale, baby. Uh, so obviously they blocked me, so I wasn't even able to see this. Uh, but I was thinking, I kind of put together a sketch here. Uh, they should go airborne. Okay. Have you ever seen like a cow get airlifted on a farm from a helicopter? Yeah, they strap him in and then they take him and he's hanging by a single like strong. And then he's just flown like through the countryside into another farm and dropped off. Mm-hmm. Uh, imagine that at the Disney World parks, there's like a roller coaster that goes around the whole park Mm -hmm. and there's like an elevated track basically. And it's imagine taking that, attaching a heavy duty weight bearing harness to the bottom. Extremely heavy duty. You strap in the fatties and you fly them around the park like dried salami. Okay. (laughs) And it's kind (laughs) of like a swing too. It's almost a ride in itself. It's like a ride. Yeah, hey, that's fair. It's not bad, right? I think, and I think the future Disney is probably like, okay, yeah, this might work because it's all fat adults now. Yeah, there's not even kids at Disney anymore. Did you guys realize that? You just swing them around. Kids don't even go. It's just gays and fat women. It's a good point. Um, but yeah, again, I just want to reiterate our point of if you're consuming plus size Disney niche content, then you are at rock bottom, and it's time to make a change, and you should cancel that Disney trip. And immediately go on a like weight loss journey mm. because that is rock bottom. And you can't ignore rock bottoms. You could ignore maybe one, but yeah. then you have to start acting, right? And I was going to say the same thing, but as a person of size, even though I'm on my way down. Person of pigging, yeah. As a former pigger. pigger uh, whoa, <laughs> buddy. Whoa. Someone who partakes in piggery. Yeah, that's a slur in a, a lot of, <laughs> the, the a lot of places. Word. Yeah. <laughs> As a as a person who formerly partook in piggery, uh, maybe you don't want to hear me giving advice on how to be skinny. Yeah. So we we exported or what's it called? We outsourced it. Outsourced it to a migrant. This is all to those people who are fat and lazy. Think about your family, about your great great grandparents, about those guys who fight against the Nazis. 
This is the way you're gonna pay them? By being a fat and lazy motherfucker? What the fuck is wrong with you? Get your shit together. Didn't want to hear it from me. Yeah, you can't say it. He can. We have a diversity. We have all these migrants. And America's a country of immigrants. Well, that's what the immigrants think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. That's our first page of cringe. Second page of cringe. Okay. Uh, the kid who wants to choose their gender. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. What was your dream about last night? I got married with a little girl. You got married with a little girl? Not a boy? When I get older, I'm going to be a boy. You're not going to be a boy. You're a girl. Will I be older? Yeah, when you're older, you're going to have long hair. You're pretty. Put makeup on. No, when I be older, I'm a boy. When I be older, I'm going to be a boy. So I can marry a little girl. Yeah, all right. You when I be older, when I be older, I be a boy. And there's Muppets on Twitter who are going, I understand this child. This one lady goes, I understand the child perfectly. Wish her mom did too. Marsha Warfield here, yeah. <laughs> so you think this is evidence of like the kid is trans and needs to make a life-changing decision? Immediately. When I be older, you don't even know grammar. <laughs> <laughs> when I be older, I'm going to be a girl. So the people take that seriously and think that's something to act on. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary. I know. I really have nothing to say other than some people are living in a completely different reality where that is gospel from a literal toddler who can't even speak. Yeah. That's a sign of something. So we don't really listen to kids unless they say something that will completely ruin their life. Yeah. Then we do it. Yeah. It's, it's, when I be older, I want that too. It's like, oh, well, okay. where do you I'll want it? i you now. What, should we go? What do you think? Johnny Five Stars or the other yeah. tattoo, House of Tattoo? What? I want Paw Patrol on my face. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. All right. I mean, you know best was for your best for your body. I have to listen. Yeah. <laughs> I have to listen. Uh, speaking of, this is kind of in the similar vein of listening to children or people whose brains aren't fully developed. Fully developed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not crossing any lines. This is a ad for a Down Syndrome girl who wants to do more. Hey, bartender. You assume that I cannot drink a margarita. So you don't serve me a margarita? So I don't drink a margarita. Your assumption becomes reality. And parents. You assume that I cannot live on my own. So you don't encourage me to live on my own. So I don't live on my own. Coach. You assume that I cannot hit harder. So you don't train me to hit harder. So I don't hit harder. And teacher, you assume that I cannot learn Shakespeare. So, you don't teach me Shakespeare. Old MacDonald had a farm. So, I don't learn Shakespeare. E-I-E-I-O. Yeah. E-I-E-I-O. Yeah. So, this is a commercial to let Down Syndrome people make up their own minds on what they want to do. And what they want to do is drink and live on their own with no parent supervision. Yeah, I'd love to be a drunk Down syndrome person trying to find their way in America. I'm sure nothing bad happens there. Yeah. Nobody steals your wallet, your credit card, your whole info, entire identity. Pretty easily. And then also Down syndrome people are abused more than other groups of people yeah. by a lot. One of those dark statistics where like Down syndrome people are sexually assaulted almost seven times more than normal. Yeah. And also you want to live on your own. I mean, that's 2500 bucks a month with a 5K deposit. Yeah. So did someone let you work a job yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Did you get a hundred k a job a year? I, I don't know. Maybe you did. It's like you didn't think that part out. And they got the. Well, <laughs> that's why you got to live at home. That's did, why you can't drink. Like and dude, that's the thing too. You got Down syndrome. You got unlucky when the time came uh, to be born, right? Mm -hmm. But you live a pretty chill life with no responsibilities. Why don't you lean into that instead of trying to get drunk off margaritas and go live on your own? I mean, I don't think that ends well, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why, we, we assume we can't drive, so you don't let me drive. Yeah. Now you're drunk driving. <laughs> now all you're of drunk a sudden. driving to your house where you live by yourself? Yeah. I Get this get this person a screwdriver. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, that is the end of page two of Cringe. We're on our last page of Cringe of the week. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, the So this group of eighth graders mm -hmm. did... Well, let's just let the clip play. Developing news now from Western Mass, a group of eighth graders facing criminal charges for allegedly setting up a mock slave auction on Snapchat. Boston 25 News reporter John Monahan live not far from the school. And John, the DA calls this behavior vile. 
That's right, he did, Vanessa. And he also says the fact this happened in a middle school is very unsettling. We also spoke to the mother of one of the victims here, and she, she tells us this alleged incident of a mock slave auction is not the only time her daughter has faced an incident of racial bullying. Six classmates, eighth graders in Southwick, will face criminal charges for their alleged role in a mock slave auction, according to the Hampton County DA. That several students uttered hateful and racist comments, including notions of violence toward people of color, racial slurs, derogatory pictures and videos, and a mock slave auction directed at two juveniles, which aims to hold accountable those who committed provable criminal acts. Provable criminal acts, eighth graders. Middle schoolers doing the edgy, like, stupid humor just because that's where the edge is and that's where the line is, yeah. right? You did a little fake slave auction on Snapchat. Can't even do that anymore. Yeah. And so you want me to read these charges yeah, here? Yeah. One student has been charged with interference with civil rights, threats to commit a crime, and witness interference. Another student was charged with interference with civil rights and threats to commit a crime. Four other students were charged with threats to commit a crime. Yeah, and you know the phrase "boys will be boys." Yes, that's only used when black teenagers and children are doing bad stuff. Mm. When it's a white group of kids, like these eighth graders, then they're going to be charged as adults. Yeah, that got outlawed. That's over. Also, this DA uh, Galuni said that he is looking at a series of anti-racist measures following this racist racist incident. Galuni said he's creating a unit that will deliver an anti-hate and anti-bullying curriculum to the Southwick school community. Uh, and he's been – he's going to create specific programs to address racism in schools. Interesting. And it's like the, all these kids are doing is like – if you're in middle school, right, and you're a little piece of shit, mm -hmm. like obviously the, we're not defending or whatever these kids, but they shouldn't be criminally charged. But you go, okay, where's the line? It's there? Okay, I'm going to go past it. That's what I'm going to do because I'm an oppositional teenage kid having fun and bored in class, right? Mm -hmm. And the DA goes, okay, that's now it's my time to shine. I got to come in and lay down the law, right? We got to create a unit to combat against this racist stuff. And it's like, we're always told how America is irredeemably racist, all mm -hmm. these horrible things and built on racism and slavery. And then like, this is the evidence of like horrible slavery. Yeah. Some kids saying the N word in a group chat. Eighth graders, they're 12 and 13 years old. 13-year-olds saying the N-word and racist things in a private group chat. That's everybody. Yeah. We all say the N-word in group chats. We all say it around the house and sing it in songs and call Jerry the dog the N-word. Yeah. Every day. Everybody so if that's does illegal, it. <laughs> lock me up. Here's my wrist. Here, here we go. Um, and so th this is kind of an, a trend that's been happening. Uh, a piece of news that came out last week was a Belgian court sentence as a prominent far-right activist to one year in prison for spreading hate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the same thing, racist, hateful, uh, Nazi, and negotiationist speech. And so, like, it's the same thing. A group chat and a guy's getting actually one year in jail and uh, he's banned from running for public office for 10 years because him and his friends are a little too edgy. In the group chat, the private conversations. Yeah. Yeah, and then this DA who's starting the task force, he's also okay with giving illegals driver's license? Yeah, District Attorney Anthony Galuni, Sheriff Nick Kochi, support driver's licenses for migrants without legal status. So that's what everyone's prioritizing. The people who actually break the law and are here illegally, we don't know who they are or where they came from or what their, what their goals are here, give them a license. These eighth grade white kids who made a couple insensitive jokes in the group chat, we're going to create a unit to tackle this. Yeah. Great. All right, well, let's move on to some people that should be locked up. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed. We've covered it on the show and in Bonus Land. There's a new trend where these, like, hot guys mm. are doing, like, these lip-syncing videos and kind of, like, choreographed dances. We're not going to play the music because it's copyright, so imagine some country song. But look at these guys dancing. Hey, what's up? I'm coming to the camera. Yeah, call me. Hey, me too. Oh, I got my move. Yeah, look at me. Got my gay outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the song. They all go wacky, right? They do yeah. the gay shit. I mean, without the song, it's even worse. Yeah. They need that song because otherwise they're doing really gay shit to a camera for no reason. And these are hot guys. 
Uh, these guys are good guys. They should be up to something productive. Working out, smoking cigarettes. Looking cool. Driving a truck. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be doing any of this shit. Yeah. This is gay. Yeah. And you know that saying, it's better to be silent and be presumed a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt? I do. These kids need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Don't do this gay shit because <laughs> you like this will actually hurt you. Some girl will see this and go, oh my God. This guy does this gay shit. Yeah. And then she won't bang you, and she would have. Yeah. And if that's important to you, you know. One of them just got a very high-end hot girlfriend, Christy Cavallari. The really? One who used to date the football player. Jay Cutler, Kristen she, Cavallari. She dates one of them now. And he's like 10 years or 20 years younger than her? Yeah. Whatever. And who she cares? does the videos. Well, what? Oh, my God. I could God. fuck all these guys up. <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe. I could fuck them all up at one time. <laughs> Maybe I can just like kind of like shake them all. If up. you catch them off guard and they don't know what's happening yet, they go, "Whoa, what's he? What's this guy's problem?" And I thought I could kind of like <laughs> shake the whole group, the whole group up, and then like multiple will fall at once. Yeah, kinda maybe rattle them all. Maybe, at once. maybe you're getting greedy there. I'm getting a little greedy. Um, but no, these guys like I don't understand. They're it's humiliation ritual type shit, and uh, you're already hot. These guys are already good looking. So all you have to do is post like a video of you like doing something natural instead of performing for the camera. Like, here's me with a fish. And a girl's going to see you and go, whoa, he's really hot. And he knows how to fish. Yeah, you don't have to do the gay stuff. Yeah, you don't have to cast and go. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, uh, There's another one with the guy with the dog. Yeah, this, this is this is bad. Too. He's part of the group, I think. It's even worse. Well, hi. Um, me and my dog want to know if you and your dog want to go on a date. Uh, It'd be fun <laughs> if you want to. If you don't have a dog, um, we can share. <laughs> River's cute. Anyways, um, let me know. <laughs> right, buddy? Do you want a mom? Imagine yeah, you're his dad. <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking to? Like, hey, where'd that tripod from my, my rifle go? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're using it in the barn with your phone? Who are you talking to? This guy like wet his lips and is like, hey, ladies, you want a dog? <laughs> and he's <laughs> laughing at his own shit. And he's recording himself like a psychopath. Yeah. I think he's getting his lips done, too. Yeah, it looks like Which is bad, because look at this. This next thing, this guy is another example of twink face. Mm -hmm. Normal Middle Eastern type. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Your dad works at the bodega. Now you're just Ken Badal twink guy. Yeah. That nose. You had a long ethnic nose that your dad and your grandpa and your great-grandpa had. Now you have like a little girl face. You're headed for gay porn. All it's paths so lead weird. to gay shit. Yeah. And then this obviously, so this is my, this is not schizo theory because I think it's just true and you'll probably agree with it. Okay. The algorithm is like gearing, it's driving men towards this. Okay. So the algo is going to reward men who participate in actions like this. And then it's going to also be rewarded by women who are on birth control. Because mm. women on birth control like feminized men, which is this. The algorithm's uh, rewarding feminized men, which is this. And it's kind of like everything is just like driving men to be twinkified. Yeah. Unfortunately. I agree. And these guys, these uh, the first video, those guys should all be kind of uh, regulating their local areas by bullying people. They should be making fun of gay people <laughs> and trans people. They should be having the slave trade group chat yeah and instead they're doing gay camera Drunk shit driving i know <laughs> there's all kinds of shit you can do you, you yell at the window you throw shit at people <laughs> see a fat guy walking down the street you yell at him what's up pig <laughs> boop, boop, and you go and then your boys get out and fight if it comes to it i know but, but instead they're doing uh they're doing prince shit they're doing choreographed dances i don't get it man i don't get it either it's very sad america's and open for the taking right now yeah. Anybody who wants it. And they're importing a lot of people who want it. And that's why the Muslims just take it. I know. And these guys are asleep at the wheel. This used to be the Christian fighters. Mm -hmm. And now they're just asleep doing TikToks, dating like a 45-year-old woman. It's bad. And then we all, I mean, I could fuck them all up at once. You said it. Yeah, yeah, he can. I could kind of grab a couple, and throw them, <laughs> and then fight the other two. All right, well, that's the end of Cringe. We're moving on to Urban. It's going to get a little bit worse. Uh, there was a fight. Where was the fight? Memphis. In the Memphis. Brawl? Look at this fight and then listen to the person videoing. Mm -hmm. Don't break them up now. Let them fight. Let them fight. Don't mess. You got a pistol. They got a pistol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mama got a pistol out there with some kids. See? Mess ass shit. Mess as fuck. 
He got a pistol too. Everybody got a pistol. They just as messy as fuck. Messy as fuck. Messy as fuck. Where's David Hogg? David. David, we got some gun crime here. There it is. Uh, one woman dead, three shot, two arrested, David. And then the, the Condemn mess- them. David, you have to help out in Memphis. I thought you I thought you had loved gun control and hated shooting. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do in Memphis. You David. gotta fly down there, David. Fly <laughs> on down. Um yeah, and also all the missed shots. Like you boom, 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 boom. What happens when you miss the person you're shooting? You're just shooting into a house. Yeah. There's like a you're on you're in a, a suburban street. Anything that you any miss is going into someone's house, mm-hmm. which is obviously why people are dying. From yeah. This. And then this is another thing where some people like to accuse people on the right of kind of showing black violence and being like, why are you showing that? It's like, this happened March 15th mm-hmm. in Memphis, like within our podcast window. Happens a lot. It's a lot of urban decay. Uh, they keep us in business, right? Yeah. Um, and so like, you can just tell, here's a mugshot of some of the people involved, very upstanding citizens mm-hmm. right there. Um, they'll be let out. Yeah, they'll be let out. And so uh, it, it was described as a large street fight among children and adults. And it's like, there's no difference. And then those children, you know, boys will be boys, let them go. And it's not, we can't lock up kids and put them in the prison to school the prison pipeline. But then the other kids in the group chat, that's charges. Yeah. These, you know, if this is kids, I'm sure they'll be let go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, we have uh, Rob Smith saying uh, the RNC, Rob Smith was mad at the RNC. He said the RN. He read it. The RNC just cut minority outreach, closed centers that were in black and Latino communities, and fired a bunch of people that were working on all this. But the black vote is totally going to be forty percent because Trump mugshot T-shirts. Yeah. Well, Rob, every time the election comes around, it goes ninety percent Democrat. Black people vote ninety percent Democrat. So, how much money do you think we should keep dumping on that? Let's just let's just not focus on that and then maybe attract a new voter for not being woke pussies trying to attract all the LGBTs and blacks and stuff. And you know what I would do personally mm. if I was Governor Abbott, if I were a Republican leader, I would just keep sending as many illegals as into heavily black populations as possible mm. until they get the message. Yeah. You know? But it's not going to work. But that's what's happening, too, in Chicago. You've seen some of the complaints and the fights. You lazy. Get to work. Right? Yeah, Remember, yeah. We, we showed that on the show. Um, so, I mean, I don't think uh, some sort of marketing campaign from the RNC is going to change the 90-10 black rule. Or a Blexit rally that white people go to. That you were at, Rob. Right? <laughs> yeah. Weren't you doing that? Yeah. Weren't you trying to blitz hey, it? let's save the Rob shit for Bonus Land. All right, all right. We got right. more. We got a lot of Rob shit to cover in Bonus Land. Okay. com. Sign up now. 30-minute Bonus Land out now. All kinds of Rob shit. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the clip of the guy who thinks that white people are scared and intimidated by black people too much. Okay. Don't nothing make a racist person more nervous and uncomfortable than a black person that's too quiet or that's not friendly. Even little stuff like if you're not smiling, they say little slick stuff like smile. You know what I'm saying? And I done told y'all before about an old job I had years back. I got pulled into the office one time. And I'm thinking something wrong, and they end up telling me, oh, you know, nothing's wrong. You're doing a great job. You're just, you're not talkative. You know, is everything okay? And that's more of a, uh, I'm afraid type of thing. And the reason behind this, these folks are very hateful. They're very conniving. They're very sneaky. And they constantly got this paranoia that this karma of what they put out is going to come back on them. So every black person that they can't read, because they always trying to read us and get to know how they can play with us and deal with us, and we don't give them that, they get uncomfortable because now it's, is this my karma that I'm worried about? Is this person going to try to do something hateful to me the way that I do hateful stuff? You get what I'm saying? And so that's what you come across a lot of the times. Yeah. You know how white people, like sometimes we'll get into groups and we'll throw our ski masks on and you run into a store and just grab whatever you want and you and your boys That's probably what he's talking about. I I don't know what he's talking about because it seems (laughs) like he's just he's talking about karma. And if if you're not talking or friendly with people, then you might think that you're going to be a victim of a crime soon or something. Yeah, I think it must be all the uh, gun crime white people do Mm -hmm. and how like white people will fight and get into arguments and lose their cool and shoot somebody for pretty much nothing. Mm. That happens a lot. Maybe it's that. Uh, But jokes aside. If I don't know, if a white person is 
surrounded by a group of black people and black people are 42 times more likely to kill that white person than the white person is to kill the black people, wouldn't you be nervous around certain demographics that are doing all the crimes? I think so. I think it's just a reasonable assumption that like, oh, I don't know, maybe this person's got that dog in him yeah. and that dog is letting that thing talk, pop, 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 right? He's not smiling. He's not talking. He's got his hood up. Yeah. I can't uh, relate with him. I can't, I haven't been able to sh find any common ground. He's quiet all the time, uh, you know, but I'm worried about my karma or something. That's what he thinks. He's, yeah. he's applied his own logic to it. Because white people are the violent ones. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Right, moving on, our next clip, there was a New York City subway shooting. Yep. Probably another white guy. Yeah, and this went viral, but... So this is like this kind of the chaos that happened while it was going on. And, you know, if you look closely, everyone's kind of just waiting and hiding and in like a fetal position on the ground waiting to get executed. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend that. Yeah, I, I think you try to make a move. You know? Yeah. You run for the door a little bit, a little stampede action. I don't know if the survival instinct is power and fear in a tightly enclosed space with a lot of other soft targets. Yeah, and just wait to wait to be put down. Yeah. And then at the end of the video, the lady goes, where's the NYPD? It's like, you guys got rid of them. Yeah. You said they were the bad guys. I don't know. Yeah. Now you're facing a real bad guy, and now it's, where's the police? Now it's refund the police. We need to yeah. fund the police again all of a sudden when you're on the line. Exactly. And then you start praying, too, maybe. Maybe people that aren't religious at all and all of a sudden start praying to God. That's what happens. You kind of get faced with something tough, and then you you reevaluate, and it resets your views. Yeah. I am for police. I do believe in God. Yeah. Stuff like that. You get on a plane and it starts doing bouncy, bouncy. A little turby. You start praying. Yeah. There's a reason. Um, all right. Nashville PD. This is good news. It's a male-dominated profession, so women are scared to take that step, maybe thinking that they're not able to do it, but you can do it if you have that right mindset. It's a mindset the Metro Police Department hopes more women will have. Their goal? A 30% female police force. Last year, it was 11%. This year, it's 13%. And is it even attainable? I think we're definitely growing, so if we can just keep that momentum going, um, I believe that it is definitely attainable. Commander Tiffany Gibson is Metro's first female director of training. She says among the biggest changes they've made to help attract recruits, especially women, <sighs> no more physical ability tests. Now trainees must pass a physical agility test designed to mirror tasks in the field. They've also added lactation Great. rates for nursing. Mothers. He didn't have to do that. Here's the thing. Where'd that number come from? We want 30% women. Why? Aren't men better at being cops? Mm. Isn't that kind of like one of those secret things that we don't have to acknowledge or bring up all the time, but men are better cops? Mm -hmm. There's some very... All the criminals are violent, super violent men. Yeah. And you're going to have to fight them. And if you're a girl... Your tool, your your trump card on a super violent criminal is executing someone. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to have to pull that trump card. That's kind of like a last minute end of the end of the line thing, right? And you'd think that this type of uh, thing of like getting more women in the force, mm -hmm. that was what you would do if like there was not really much crime at all last year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the things are the way things are going and where everything's trending, uh -huh. we're trending towards more crime. Yeah. We're trending towards more violence. We're trending towards more illegals and them doing crimes. Now is not the time to get Commander Debbie on the force or whatever. Yeah, Commander Deb, and she thinks she's pulling her taser, but really it's the gun, and then all of a sudden you're dead. And the physical requirements, the way to get more women in the force is to remove the physical ability test. And now you just got to drag a dummy across the gymnasium floor and you'll get your stripes. Like, did you hear what you said? Like, isn't the whole test to see if you're able to be a cop out in the real world? So you need to carry a certain amount of weight up the stairs and that's how much your partner weighs. And if any, something were to happen, you had to carry your partner. We didn't know you'd be able to do it. And it's like, instead of saying women need to do that to do join the force, they just get rid of that. So now it's like the quality and standards of being a cop are completely gone at a time where crime and chaos is going through the roof. And, and something Good luck. like, let's yeah. see how it goes. Let's yeah. see how that works out. Good experiment. Have fun with that. Uh, I won't be around for it. And then in five years they go, huh, didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for stuff like this, I'm a little bit of an accelerationist. Like why 30? Let's get 60% women. 
let's see how it goes. Let's stress test this system. Yeah, smart. You know, like, uh, let's see how how the residents of uh, Nashville like it when there's all these women around. And the criminals, they catch on. I don't know if anybody thinks, like, uh, America is full of incentive systems, right? The criminals, the illegals, drug users, everybody catches on very quickly of what they can and can't do, mm-hmm. what's allowed and what's not allowed. And, you know, if there's a 65% women police force, I have a feeling the uh, the amount of, like, heat-type heists are going to go way up. The armored car, yeah. like uh, Val Kilmer really just p- 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 turning around, shooting Deb. And they have all these, like, new rules and regulations. So it's like, all right, th- if you run away from the cops, the cops won't chase you. Mm-hmm. A third of the cops are all girls. They're not allowed <laughs> to use their guns. It's like, good luck. It's like criminals are just like, uh, criminals are fucking... I guess I'll just take it then. Yeah. I'm going to walk out now. Oh, if you steal over a thousand, then you get arrested. It's like, all right, I'm take $990 worth of stuff. I'm just going to go. <laughs> they go they, you, you know how you have conversations with like little kids about, uh, like a little kid will get into a why, why, mm-hmm. why? And you just keep answering because you're the dad and you like to play the game and see how far you can get along. I want to do this same chain, that same why game mm-hmm. with this chief of police or with the woman who's in charge of the training. Yeah. It's like, why? Why? And you get to the end of it and it's just like, because I personally want more women on the force. It has yeah. nothing to do with who's better at the job, what makes a safer city. It just has everything to do with like social dynamics and wokeness, really. Yeah. You get the final why and it's... Because George Soros paid for certain elected <laughs> officials with a completely skewed anti-American worldview to be put into power. That's the final why. <laughs> That's the final why. Because George Soros. Yeah. All right. Last clip of Urban Decay. There was a street takeover, and an old white guy went out to try and stop it. And look what happened to him. They knocked him out, and then they beat him up. Sucker punch knockout, and here's them stomping him. Had to stomp him, too. Yeah, let's get Officer Kathy out there to get this sorted out. (laughs) Deb and Kathy, Deb and Kathy, there's a takeover. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And so here's the thing, too. Like, when you get into a certain situation, these takeover people, they're, they're chomping at the bit to knock out an old white guy. And this guy probably lives on the corner. He sees injustice. He's not he's not smart. Show watchers know you get knocked out at the at the takeover, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, there's a certain thing like where your girlfriend's hitting you or a little kid is trying to beat you up or you kind of take the high road, you bear hug them and you kind of walk them out or do you know, do something like that. De-escalate. The urban youths out here are just looking for a sweet soft jaw knockout spot on a 68-year-old man. They either want to punch you and be the knockouter or film it. Yeah, or stomp you on the ground afterwards. There's three main roles in this uh, <laughs> situation. So, you know, I, I don't know what's uh, how the racial narrative in America has been helping this, but people get a chance to knock out an old white guy and they really swing away. They swing out of their shoes for it. Yeah. Crow exactly. hop into the punch. And that old white guy, he shouldn't be the, the front line of this. Of course not. It should not. be cops. It should be security or whoever. Uh, younger people, and then the old white guy. We're already at that point, and that's what happens. He gets immediately knocked out. Yep. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to Uplifting Gold. We have a good Uplifting Gold section. First one, this kid at a, a college basketball game putted, did a putt for the from the entire length of the court to win a free car. 94 feet. Drains it. I don't think you ever top that. That's the best moment of his life. Of course. You never get a moment like that. That's sick. And then every time you pick someone up, you go, you want to know how I got this car? You show the video. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, all right. The person who's talking to the T-Mobile person at the mall. This is funny. Everyone's always wanted to do this. Question for you. How many lines do you have with T-Mobile? Just one. Just the one. And how much is your monthly bill? <laughs> That's pretty good. Good bet. Clean. You know, yeah. The person that approaches you with the clipboard, approaching everybody, you give them a couple informations, and then you run. We actually had something like this the other day uh, when we were walking down, and it, like 
I always walk right past the clipboard people. Yeah. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, what? yeah. These guys had a, a witty line. They made fun of you. Me? They were like, oh, glasses and shoes or something. Yeah, yeah. all I see is glasses and shoes. That's what somebody said. But I think he's noticed your glasses, then I had six shoes on, and they noticed my shoes. But these guys are like getting us to, uh, attempting to get us to sign a document or something, some sort of petition. And it was for like amnesty something. Yeah, and it's like, fuck off. We don't need, we don't need more amnesty. We don't care. And the kids were doing bits. We're like, we'll get you next time. And it's yeah. like, bro, just take a little rejection. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I didn't want to run away. I wanted to knock. Yeah. I yeah, wanted yeah, to hit him. Yeah. Fight or flight. Yeah. And I was, I was gearing for a fight. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. It's for amnesty. Do you guys believe in amnesty? And it's like, nah. And another another one was for like saving a dog. Yeah, saving dogs. I don't know, no, buddy. I'm getting real sick of people approaching me on the street with like some sort of pet project. Yeah, especially when it's like abortion, pro-abortion, pit bull, <laughs> illegal immigrants getting money shit. Yeah. You're the opposite. You should be in jail. Yeah, I, you're aiding and abetting a violent criminal. This actually falls under treason, yeah. <laughs> the penalty of which is death by fire and I know, and I, you know what? So if you I, want to go further into it, yeah. you go to jail, buddy. Um, all right, let's go to the person catching the fish. They have a fish on the line. Bluegill. And it's getting hit by something big. Get it. I can't. Did you get it? No. There's wait, wait. I can put the fish inside no, the net. Put it back in. Put it back in. It's right there. Put it in. Oh, it's big. It's big. There's two. There's three. Yeah. Get There's it. three. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> he just pulled out a bass without hooking it. Good shit. That's good American shit. Yeah. And you know what? That girl is trying to get a bass with a net. And those guys are doing a gay TikTok in front of the thing. They're walking around going like this because they want to get sucked later. Yeah. So gay. What happened? What happened to the men of America? What happened? And then there's an emergency. Say there's an emergency. Two women officers come. They say, get on the ground. <laughs> Who's here? Yeah. The, exactly. The women are cops and the men are doing TikTok videos with lip injections. Something, yeah. Don't show any grandparents from World War II that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my why chain. Why, why, <laughs> why? And then nobody's gonna have an answer at the end. Fully of Fully backwards. All yeah. right, last clip of the entire show. This guy is a new golfer. So proud of himself, right? Absolutely. I'm gonna be watching the Golf Channel. Oh. I'm gonna eat golf <laughs> weedy. I'm gonna make us tons of money on the pro golfing tour. <laughs> In the sink. Hi. The boys are gonna go play around real quick. This man. I'll see you after Harold Varner the third. Guys, can you tell this man to get out of his golf clothes? Four! <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's a nice family. Look at that. New hobby, nice house, nice family, mom and dad. Dad's got a new hobby. No one's letting that thing talk. No Nobody's one's letting talking. Him fight. Let him fight. Nobody's saying axe. Yeah. It's pretty good. There's there's different lanes. You don't have to pick the lane that you think you have to pick. Okay, very very uh, meta there. Profound. Yeah. All right, another Fluggis Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you love this show and you're watching to this point, 30-minute bonus episode drops right now on FluggisTalks.com. Join the members-only community. We have a Discord. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a Discord <laughs> We have uh, bonus episodes. You guys are going to love it. If you like the show, you're going to love more of the show. And it supports us. We had to pay the bills and keep the lights on. So seven something a month. Sign up. Fluckustalks.com is the website. It's linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Friday. How about you great, great grandparents? How about those guys who fight against the Nazis? Get your shit together.